With his army broken, Paulus was captured, but Alexander, impressed by his bravery, reinstated him. Paulus proved a valuable ally as Alexander sought to pacify the surrounding area. Still, his restless spirit seemed unsatisfied, and it became apparent that he planned to continue on down the Ganges to take the unsettled empire of Magadha. He also voiced plans for a naval expedition back across the Mediterranean to conquer Carthage. This was a step too far for his exhausted men, and an officer, Conus, found the courage to speak for them. When told that his troops would rather return home than continue with him on his road to personal glory, Alexander stalked back to his tent in a rage. After three days, the situation remained unchanged, so Alexander bowed to the inevitable and agreed to return home. True to character, though, the homeward route which Alexander chose was not straightforward and presented further opportunity for battle and conquest in the Indus Valley. On reaching the Indus Delta, he assembled a fleet which was to support his land army as it marched westward across the desolate Gedrosian Desert. However, the monsoon separated the two forces, and there was great loss of life amongst his men from thirst and heat exhaustion before they reached safety at Susa. Alexander returned to Babylon, intending that the city should become the capital of his new empire. Flushed with success, and firmly convinced of his own divinity, Alexander's behavior became increasingly despotic. This, coupled with further measures to mix the Persian and Greek troops and cultures, led to unrest, including a full revolt at Opis. In 323 BC, Alexander's plans for the construction of a fleet to attack Arabia and Carthage were well advanced when he fell ill with a fever. Ten days later, at the age of 32, Alexander died. When asked on his deathbed who was to succeed him, he replied, The strongest.